So our next topic is going to be ellipses, okay? Or ellipsi, if you will. Now, what an ellipse is, is it is the, now let's see if this fires up. Come on now, here we go, there it goes, okay? An ellipse is a curved line forming a closed loop where the sum of the distances from two points, we call those two points the foci, to every point on the line is constant. So as you can see here, if I drag this along, no matter where I am, the sum of A and B is always going to be the same. It's going to be a constant. And those two points, A goes from the point on the, fo or on the ellipse to the first foci. B goes from the point on the ellipse to the second foci. And that adding those two distances together all the way around gives me the exact same distance, gives me the same length all the way around. Okay? A and B are changing but the sum is constant. Okay. So now let's see if I can get back to Oh, well, there we go. There we go. There we go. We're learning. We're learning here. There we go. Now we're coming back. Okay? There's one condition in an ellipse here is the standard form of an ellipse. So we have, it looks very much like a circle, but the difference is, is that a squared and b squared have to be different because if they're the same, it is a circle, but they, if they're not, it's an ellipse. Okay. A couple of things that we can notice about here, we again see h and k coming into play. Okay. Again, they're inside a set of parentheses, so we're thinking oppositely along the lines with that. Okay. And notice that it's an ellipse is always equal to 1. Okay. It's always here equal to 1. So we have to divide by that number out there, and we divide each term by the way that you tell an ellipse from a circle is the coefficient on the squared terms are different. That's how you tell an ellipse from a circle. The coefficients on the squared terms for a circle are the same. The coefficients for the squared term on an ellipse are different. There's a few real world um, practicalities of ellipses. Uh, Orbits in space are normally elliptical. Comets, planets, etc., those are usually elliptical. Um, there are some buildings that are elliptical in shape on the outside. If you take a glass of water and you tip it to the side, it's an elliptical. Um, electrons uh, go around an atom in, in elliptical shape. But these bottom two, okay, the, there's an elliptical billiards table, if you will. This bottom two, these bottom two are, uh, are tech architectural um, cool things about different elliptical shaped rooms. Okay? Over here on the left, this is um, the, in the U.S. Capitol building. Okay? It was the original um, United States Congress where they met, where they had their, their sessions. And uh, John Quincy Adams, uh, while a member of the House of Representatives, discovered that if he sat at one foci, uh, because of the elliptical ceiling, he could easily uh, eavesdrop on the conversations of his political opponents who were standing over at the other foci. And so he positioned his desk right at the foci so that he could hear what was going on at the other foci. Right? And then he had a leg up on anything that they were trying to, to do. Right? So that's just a little historical observation for you. Yeah? So let's talk about ellipses. Here is the equation of an ellipse. 
what we're going to do with that now is we are going to... All right, sorry about that. The uh, the announcement started going off, uh, and so I had a quick stop, and so we didn't have to listen to all that stuff on, in the background. So we are going to graph an ellipse very much similar to this. Okay? So the first thing that we have to do is we have to identify where the center is, just like with circles, just like with vertices in parabolas. Okay? So the center of this ellipse is located at 3 comma 2. Once again, I look at the H and I look at the K and I think oppositely because they are in a set of parentheses. So the center of this ellipse is at the point 3 comma negative 2. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I am going to, so we're first going to graph that center. 3 comma negative 2 puts my center right there. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look underneath the x squared term. So that's this number right here that's underneath the x squared term. I'm going to take that number and I'm going to square root it. Okay. And that's going to be my endpoints going left and right because it's underneath the x. So the square root of 9 is 3. So I'm going to go left 3, 1, 2, and 3. And that's going to be an endpoint. 1, 2, and 3 to the right. And that's going to be an endpoint. Okay. So I, because it's 9, I went left and right 3, and I put endpoints there. Next, you probably already guessed, we're going to look at the, and now I'm going to have to copy this back over here. So my center was here, and then I went left and right 3, left and right 3. Okay. Now we're going to look underneath the y squared term. That's going to be 16. I'm going to take the square root of this number, and that's going to be 4. So I'm going to go up and down 4 from the center. 1, 2, 3, and 4. So there's my upper point. 1, 2, 3, and 4. There's my lower point. Okay? Now, this is the framework for my ellipse. We can now draw in our ellipse. Okay. All right. So we can draw in that, that ellipse. And there's our ellipse. An ellipse is a elongated circle in one dire or in one way, either up and down or left and right. In this case it was elongated vertically. Okay? Now, a couple of uh, minor points here about the, an ellipse. We have two axes. One is called the minor axes, which is going to be the shorter axes. In this case, it's the horizontal one. We also have a major axis. That's going to be the longer of the two. In this case, it is the vertical axes. But you can always um, look for that. Some, you can look at your original equation, and you can tell that right away. So from my original equation, my bigger number is underneath the y, so my major axis is going to be vertical. Okay? Shorter axes is the minor, and that's going to be on the horizontal in this case. Now the endpoints of the major axes are called the vertices. Vertices. Okay. So on this particular example, I have a vertice there, 
and I have a vertice there because my major axis is vertical. So the vertical, my vertices would be at 3, comma, 2, and 3, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 6. Okay. So we have that. The last thing that we need are the foci. Now, the foci is plural of focus, okay, because there are two of them. They are located on the major axes, um, and so in this case, it's the vertical axes. Again, here, let me get it, let me get the, so the center of our ellipse was at 3, comma, negative 2. We went left and right 3, 3, 1, 2, 3. We went up and down 4. One, two, three, four. We went down uh, two and four. So then here was our ellipse. Ooh, I didn't do a very good job drawing it this time. Let's start that over again. A little better. Okay. All right. So now we have to figure out the foci. Okay? So we have this distance here is 3 and this distance here is 4. Okay? So C, the distance to the foci, is going to be the square root of a squared minus b squared. Okay? A squared comes from the number under the x term b squared comes from the number under the y term, so this is a squared, and this is b squared, and we take the absolute value of that so we don't have any imaginaries going on here. Okay? So we have the so a squared is 9, b squared is 16, so the absolute value of that is going, when I subtract them, is 7. So C is equal to the square root of 7. Now this gets added and subtracted to the Y part of the center since our major axis was vertical. So the foci are located at 3, comma, negative 2, plus or minus the square root of 7. Those are my because the foci were up and down from the center because the foci are on the major axes and the major axes in this case was vertical. Okay, let's try one more and then we will turn you loose for the next video. Okay, so first thing I need to find is I need to find my center. So the center is at I'm looking at this number, and I'm looking at that number, and I'm thinking oppositely. So that's at 1, comma, negative 3. So I go to the right 1, and I go down 3. Shabam, there's my center. A squared is this number, which means that A is 2. So I'm going to go left and right 2 from my center. There's the right endpoint, 1 and 2. There's the left endpoint. B squared is underneath the Y. So that means my B is 5. So I'm going to go up and down 5 from my center. So there's 5. 2, 3, 4, and 5 is right there. That tells me that those then are my uh, vertices. So that's going to be at the point 1, comma, 2, and 1, comma, negative 8. Then I can draw in my 
skinny lips. Then I just need to figure out what the C value is. So C squared is going to equal the absolute value of A squared minus B squared. Oops, that should be an absolute value, not a parenthesis. That looks better. So that's going to be 4 minus 25. So that's going to be 21. Get down a little bit more. So C squared is going to be 21. So C is going to be the square root of 21. Square root of 21, a little bit less than 5. So then that means my foci is here and my foci is there. So that means that the foci, because it is vertical, are going to be at 1, comma, negative 3, plus or minus the square root of 21. And if that radical was simplifiable, we would simplify it in there. Thanks for playing along. You have one more video to watch just to get you into that completing the square mode again. And we will then see you on Monday or Tuesday.